Okay, there's one thing we should know about. I should have explained it a long time ago, and I didn't. Squeak is based on an image. What does that mean? An image is basically the entire contents of the memory allocated to the Squeak virtual machine. If we do something, let's say transcript show 100 factorial we get this nice large number if we quit without saving there are many ways to do that the easiest is simply to bring up the world menu generally a right click in the desktop the portion of the squeak window that doesn't have any morphs showing and you select quit, that's going to quit without saving. Save changes before quitting? Well, in this case, we want to say no. So, what does that mean? That means we bring up, we start our squeak all in one image again, and it didn't save our changes. In fact, it went back a bit because that's what I had on it before I changed. So, this time, Let's do it again, say 120 factorial, and do it, or print it rather, and you see we have this nice long number. So this time we're going to clean ourselves up, and we're going to clear that up. This time we're going to quit save and quit. So when we open it up, we're right back where we started when we quit. It's very useful and it's very important for advanced programming because there are certain things that Squeak does, and I will show those in the next video, that the default behavior it depends on the state of Squeak being saved on closing. Rather than use a database for keeping objects and records around, the fact is that everything is kept in squeak memory, so if we create a mini database, say, of names and telephone numbers, then that database stays around. We put it in a dictionary, and that database stays around as long as we have a variable that points to it. So there's no need to create an elaborate database format, it just stays in memory. Which makes it very simple to do some very advanced programming in Squeak. So let's save and quit and we'll continue with the next lesson using a whole different system.